Now, Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen. My dear friends, today is the feast of Saint Margaret of Scotland. She was a queen of Scotland, and the name Margaret means precious pearl. Margarita in Latin means precious pearl, and this is what we just read in the Gospel of today. The kingdom of heaven is like somebody who finds a precious pearl which is buried in a field, and so he knows there is a precious something very precious in this field, and the others don't know. And to get the pearl, he sells everything that he has in order to obtain this pearl. And that's, for your soul today, it's, uh, it's what's happening. You want to save your soul, basically, you have to sell more or less uh, lots of things in this world. You have to go against this world, in a way, you are selling the entire world in order to get this precious pearl. This precious pearl is the union with God, the state of grace. That's the goal of this Catholic religion, is that you die in the state of grace. You die in union with God and you obtain this eternal happiness of heaven. And for heaven, we do all this sacrifice. We sacrifice everything that we have for this, uh, for, for this purpose. Like you see your priest, uh, uh, me or whoever else, uh, priest of the resistance, now we are 73. There was one more added in June for the Balini. We, uh, we've lost, uh, you know, the churches, the recognition. We've lost our insurance policy. We've lost our stability. Uh, we cannot have um, always uh, as much fun as we like, you know. And we, have, we are thrown to the winds for this precious pearl. That's the significance of the name Margaret. It's a beautiful name. And it's taken straight from the mouth of our Lord. And she was the Queen of Scotland. And she was very generous. She was so generous that several times she emptied the treasury of the whole country. Several times the government of Scotland was left with no money left because Her Majesty the Queen had spent the whole money of the state on the poor. The poor in her time it was a high time for the Catholic Church the poor were very well treated. All of them had a roof. If you were hungry, you go to the uh, L'Hôtel Dieu, the um, God's Hostel, and there you will have free food and medical care. Medical care was not excellent, of course, at the time, but at least there was a place where you could go and it would feed you. You had a guarantee in all Catholic countries. There was a guarantee that you will be uh, taken care of. It's called the social kingship of Christ, or Christendom, Christianity. And so the princes, like Saint Margaret, they were seen spending, spending the, the money of the state for uh, the relief of the poor. As an almsgiving, as a personal almsgiving of the prince, not the communistic social security, which doesn't work, but as, as a personal almsgiving of the prince to the poor. King Louis of France would wash the feet of the poor. He would have the poor eat at his table. They had the correct mentality. And uh, Saint Louis would, uh, would uh, call the, the poor Nos Seigneurs les Pauvres. Our Lordships, the poor. And the safety, he, he understood that the blessing on his country would depend on the treatment of the weaker ones. Whereas the weaker ones in the pagan civilization or in the post-Christian civilization, the weaker ones, they get euthanized or they get, they get aborted. They, they, they are the innocent victims and there are plenty of them. That's the, uh, the kingdom of Satan. And so let us ask St. Margaret to, uh, to have this uh, virtue of charity without which there is no salvation. You must die at the end of your days in a state of charity, in a state of divine love. How do you know that you have charity? It's when you can forgive those who have offended you. It's when you, can, when you have the, the, the capacity to help, you help those who are in need. And when you cannot help, but you are poor, you don't envy those who have. It's called charity. 
and, uh, and uh, the charity of God is greater than anything. And that's why in the parable of our Lord, this, this man sells whatever he has in order to get the money to buy the field and get that precious pearl. It is infinitely precious. Our home, eternal in the heavens, not made by the hand of man, says St. Paul, our home is worth. It's the real, real estate. Those towers that they are building there, you know, they are already sinking in the mud in Bangkok. They're already sinking. It's not working. It is the unreal estate. The real, real estate, what we are after, is heaven. I'm only coming for, for that. I'm not coming here to solve the other problems because if you are in a state of grace, the other problems will eventually solve themselves. Including the social problems. And the, you can really tell, when you had kings and queens like that, it meant that people were very happy in those times. And they were. They were. In those times, they would call France a, a garden. It was a garden country. There was only a few wars here and there, very rare. Very, very rare. Only when uh, people are starting to become bad again, wars came back. Only a, a, few, uh, a few things, not much was going on. There was a great peace, there was a great harmony. I remember when I visited Catholic countries when I was young, in the 80s, there were still great traces of Catholicism in Austria or in Northern Italy. There was great harmony among these people. And, uh, and it would show, the, the, the imprint of the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ would show itself. And um, in pagan countries, people are always fighting. And what do they fight about? They fight about money, most of the time. And they fight very bitterly. They are willing to kill each other, if it were possible, to, uh, about money. Because money is, mammon is Satan. The, the, prince, of this, the prince of this world is Satan and he rules by money and that's why you clearly see uh, the connection between Buddhism and uh, money the two go together very much there's a great connection just like in, uh, in India uh, you know uh, the love of money is is staggering even if it's a poor country and it drives people crazy so uh, let us uh, understand that we have a home waiting for us. We are wayfarers. We are, uh, we are, we are not uh, here to stay. Some of you have a very hard life, so you understand it with more ease. If your life is hard, it's easier for you to understand that actually we are wayfarers. We are not here to stay. But in the meantime, if we can relieve the suffering of the others, we do so, like Padre Pio, he was hearing confessions all his life and he was making lots of miracles, became very famous and so he used his influence to collect funds and build a five-star full accommodation for his time a five-star luxurious high ceiling like a palace of a hospital and he called it Casa Sollievo de la Soferenza the house to alleviate the suffering he who had uh, stigmata, he was a suffering man, suffering a lot, he was full of compassion for the lesser suffering of his brethren. And, and we have to show to Christ uh, that charity. At the gates of heaven, if we want to enter, we have to show to Christ a true testimony of, uh, of charity. That's why, uh, you know, in, the, in our accounts, we do have lots of money we spend on uh, on charities. Today, I got an email today, uh, you know, of a lady in Cebu, and she needs medicine. And, and there's another family; they can't pay the books for the school. They have nothing, uh, let alone the uniforms. They can't even pay the school books. And they uh, they live in a, their house is uh, basically from this entrance there to to here. And she's so small that they have to send three of their children away to their parents because their house is too small. And so we need to relocate them. Because 
God is giving us benefactors and we cannot spend that whole money on our seminary. Not possible. It would be a disgrace. And so, um, but uh, you know, my other confreres also do that elsewhere in the world. And it's a kingdom of charity. It's a kingdom of our Jesus Christ. I'm bringing you the charity of our Lord by these communions I'm giving you tonight. The charity for your heart. Let this fire burn in your heart and transform itself in the true love of God and the true love of neighbor. If you want your love of God to be real, you must also show a great love for your neighbor. It's, the, it's, the, it's really the token by which uh, God will take you seriously when you will tell him next time, Oh my God, I love you very much. And may I already inspire you always to have a great charity among yourselves. If our group grows in, uh, in Thailand, we're going to have issues. There's going to be uh, you know, infighting, tensions and everything. And then, uh, then we, uh, we have to prove ourselves by being able to work together and forgive each other. Whatever misgiving there are you know, uh, from uh, any, uh, any of us. Charity is a test. It's a test. So uh, we are bringing you the faith, traditional Catholic faith, what has been taught by the church throughout the centuries. But our aim, our final aim is to achieve this divine love. Not in words, but in truth, in reality. Now, Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost,